everyone. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> and welcome to the next 30 minutes, where we shall boldly go to seek out how organisations... Um, Oh, sorry, I, I think my start clients have... Uh, <laughs> there's, there's always a technical glitch, isn't there? <laughs> well, welcome anyway. Um, where over the next 30 minutes, we shall boldly go to seek out how organisations are executing DevOps in the real world. I'll be touching on some of the challenges that they face and how they resolve them. Any data points I will be sharing um, will be coming from the surveys that we have conducted here at CCS Insight over the last... 12 to 18 months, covering a range of technology topics. Other insights um, will come from a broad range spectrum of organizations that I have had the pleasure of engaging with in order to understand their DevOps strategies and take account of their battle scars and pick up on the lessons that they have learned. So I'd like to say, um, well, my name is Bola Rotaby and I'm the research director for software development and delivery here at CCS Insight. Um, and CCS Insight is an independent specialist market intelligence research and advisory uh, firm covering um, the technology industry. Hopefully you will have deduced from this slide that I am um, an avid Trekkie um, or Star Trek fan for those that don't understand the term or don't know the term, it seems somewhat surprising. Um, before I was an analyst, I was a senior software developer working with real-time systems. And before that, um, I started my work as a chartered um, well, career as a, a chemical and process control engineer, writing control programs for operating air separation plants. So what does it really, you know, what does it really mean when DevOps is the answer? Um, talking to organizations over the last 18 months, I'm regularly find the conversation has got sharper and it's certainly more nuanced and definitely more detailed and dare I say wiser. Organizations faced with the reality of having to quickly transition to remote operations have had to move fast and shift applications and working processes to accommodate the change state they've found themselves in. Stepping up several gears exposed some important insights into how they operated, what mattered, and most of all, what could actually, yeah, what they could actually do. I think for many organizations, it was an eye opener, while for others, it was validation for what they had already begun to put in place as they journeyed to digitally transform their operations. Listen to any number of organizations recount their experiences over the last 18 months. And the message that um, now comes is out, yeah, it's one less of, you know, it's, it's a journey less about transformation. It is one that is more modernization and a realization of what is required. Yes, of course, they still recognize that in the importance of transformation as a route to greater efficiency and effectiveness, and that it's focused on the adoption of important technologies such as cloud, which enables them to rapidly scale to meet changing expectations of their customers and workforce and deliver new innovations quickly. But it's the how and the what that has become ever more prominent in their directions. Many look to modernize as the means that they will enable them to metaphorically change a car's tires while driving down the highway. This is in essence the conundrum facing many organizations who know that they must embrace the future while continuing to do business in the here and now. To modernize, this requires them to look to modern platforms, you know, modern you know, tooling environments and application architectures to deliver and manage existing business processes and new innovative ones. A modernized environment is one that is secure, secure right throughout, reliable, resilient and stable. It must have room to adapt and flex and deliver fit for purpose, relevant solutions and be intuitive in use and delivery. And least one forgets, also be cost effective. Yes, quite a tall order. <laughs> um, process initiatives such as DevOps um, and agile developments are regularly cited as bedrock um, capabilities for business and operational transformation and modernization. Both look to improve the pace of delivery 
and the quality and applicability of software solutions in line with business demands and customer expectations. In fact, from our research and you know, some of the research studies that we've been conducted, DevOps and Agile are considered de facto st you know, standards for good software delivery. And IT spend for DevOps practices within organizations continues to rise, demonstrating a desire for many of them to improve their control and cadence for software delivery through DevOps processes. Data from the studies that we have conducted within the past 18 to 24 months, actually, continuously show release orchestration, automation, and management as foundations for DevOps and transformation done well. A study or a recent study on containers that we, we, we actually recently done did highlighted how DevOps, you know, how DevOps maturity was strong in those with the most container development and delivery maturity. At a high level, you know, the experience of many organizations before they implement DevOps processes were characteristically or are characteristically common. Many used manual, many used manual post delivery processes that took time, both in terms of testing and developing, you know, and deploying the code. Mistakes were often made and that resulted in problems. A lot of the time was wasted testing features that perhaps were not even affected by the code change being deployed. As a result, many teams really did not want to deploy all that often. And so delivery cadence was slow which one can imagine, it was often frustrating for the business. Even when they tried to deploy more often, it was often very stressful for the tech team, making the idea of scaling almost unthinkable. Ultimately, just deploying changes to the development environment took time, so it was slow, infrequent, and did not help collaboration. What are DevOps processes in place and supported with the right tools what organizations are finding that they're able to deploy daily and weekly as part of their normal delivery you know, cadence. They can also run deployments you know, quickly at any time if needed without so much stress. Their continuous integration and continuous delivery um, processes are fully automated. So anytime a developer syncs their changes, the development environment are fully automated and is updated which significantly increases the speed of develop, development and delivery and collaboration. Most employee automated testing facilities, which spots problems during development rather than at the end when they're about to go live. This smoothing out of the process and re, you know, helps reduce the friction between development and testing to release. Not only does it help improve the quality of the application, it also equips teams with the capacity to support more scalable and robust infrastructures, such as that provided by cloud and multi-cloud environments. So, what's the reality within organizations? You know, that is the question that we must ask ourselves, you know? I mean, this all sounds great and what I've just talked about and nice and simple, but to give you a sense of how hard this process can be. Let's take a quick look at the realities within many organizations, enterprise organizations in particular. Most organizations are faced with a number of execution press, uh, pressures. Anyone involved in developing and delivering software knows that there is a vast technology mix to sift through that makes up their IT infrastructure systems. I mean, as we can see here, just looking underneath the covers of a global financial in, you know, institute's infrastructure environment, and we can see it's a mess of dedicated hardware, traditional as well as virtualized environments, multi-cloud combinations, established systems such as mainframes, and new application architectures such as containers. Serverless and you know, other ones are serverless, microservices, along with a mix of supporting tools and processes. Organizations are faced with a litany of competing and complementary technologies, most of which reflect variations of the leading trends coursing their way through the market. 
for too many, navigating the maze of different development and operating operations and understanding the different operational implications remains a confusing process. Crucially, many organisations face the need to balance the risk between the need of a business unit wanting to deliver a solution faster to market in order to capitalise quickly on fast changing market dynamics and core IT operations where unfettered change and speed is likely to cause instability, outage, reduced reliability and performance and cons consequently more lasting damage. Organisations have been learning to recognise, and certainly the ones we talked to over the, you know, the last 18 to 24 months, to recognise the drivers to transform and execute and the barriers hindering them. I mean, none of this is really, I mean, anyone who speaks to organisations on a regular basis sees this all the time. Some of this is, you know, sort of been happening for a number of years. So they've had a lot of things to learn, but it being come in sharp focus over the last, you know, sort of 18 months as we've all had to kind of the lockdown. On this slide, I have outlined um, some of those key drivers that such as, you know, having strong process foundations between the stakeholder communities for building, deploying and operating your solutions. It's the reason why DevOps and agile methodologies will, you know, which look to align the workflows between, you know, sort of um, development and operations and remove any kind of silos are such a vital, you know, part and such a vital foot process for modern application development and IT operations. They've also found that process governance is key, and especially is, is key as a discipline. And, you know, this is one of the things I always find out. Discipline is always seen as a negative, but actually it's not a hindrance. But the means for innovation through repeatability and predictability. Speed control is the ability to increase and decrease your cadence. But you can only do this through um, the visibility of your solutions and the right level of monitoring, instrumentation, and what we're fast beginning to see is observability. Workflow orchestration is the ability to bring things together. So let's talk about the barriers. Well, complexity, as we've already seen, and I've already talked about in terms of the you know, mix of technologies that we have, you know, um, is running within organizations. So risk tolerance and understanding the real risk to the organizations once again, this is a real challenge and it gets worse if you have if you don't have the right insight and the right visibility. The other thing is culture. People are the biggest challenges and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So and finally, staging and productions are always different environments. So when things work in one, they don't always work in the other. So this is what, you know, seeing these two balance them out and ensuring that people can get this frictionless environment. So what, you know, so what are organizations doing to tackle this challenge in the real world? So we look at this slide here, you know, um, which is very interesting. Um, and what this chart interestingly shows, um, because it's actually from one of our studies um, of around 600 respondents from across the, you know, sort of um, European, Middle East and African market and across the market landscapes, you know, sort of different verticals, financial telcos and, you know, um, and what we're actually seeing is the mix of, you know, sort of continuous integration and continuous delivery solutions, CICD for short of a word, um, being used in the market, but also the popularity of a number of cloud-based DevOps solutions. Also of note is how such solutions are more popular than in-house developed scripts, uh, which highlight the divide, you know, over the desire to roll one's own CI/CD scripts or opt for, you know, an off-the-shelf solution such as Azure DevOps or AWS CodeDeploy or many of the others. One large and um, very important public sector organization that we actually spoke to um, was heavily involved with building a CI CD um, pipeline for their Java solutions. However, they came to a stop 
because it was taking too much effort to maintain a strategic CI-CD pipeline because it was just too diverse. This led them to do a proof of concept with one of the off-the-shelf you know, development envi- DevOps environments, concluding to use it, using it to help their organization progress to digital operations. I think what really sort of um, sort of they found, you know, is they found themselves asking the question of whether it was better to provide policy for a framework for CI CD and let their engineers choose the tools, or whether it was better to stipulate the tool that they should use. And I'm sure many organizations often have this kind of build versus buy situation. The reality is that they found that many teams within their organizations couldn't handle the level of responsibilities for managing um, and maintaining a homegrown, customized environment. So they prefer to ready, you know, to use a ready-made pipeline. It was, however, acknowledged that a high-functioning programming, you know, or performing um, engineering team might just prefer to, you know, the path of going down to complying with a CID, you know, CI/CD framework and the policies supporting that over, you know, having the off the shelf. But that they found was, you know, those engineering teams were, as I said, high performing and, you know, incredibly, you know, sort of, um, you know, sort of um, very progressive and, and, and very skilled. What this really tells us is that ultimately, and certainly from the slide that we saw just now, is that the homogenous IT environment is is a bit of a fanciful concept, especially for many organizations, as they're faced with investments um, and also faced with investments in their legacy software. The reality is that a hybrid environment will exist because people want choice. No one product or technology solution can satisfy all requirements. And there are different levels of operational maturity and technology adoption within organizations. All of this is played out at multiple layers, as in, in, you know, as we can see from the previous slide, you know, as we look at the CICD tools, so many different tools used within organizations and across the market. From that same study that we talked about, you know, um, when asked, when we asked the, you know, the audience what, you know, the top software development and deployment priorities, Organizations with fairly progressive IT, you know, sort of teams and an IT base found that the following priorities were found to be important. And what's really interesting about this is that containers, which you know, you know, we know that offer a set level of consistency and resilience, um, enable DevOps teams in some organizations to take action in their own hands, and development teams taking back a certain amount of control certainly after feeling like they were struggling with the the mercies of the data centers for too long. It could take weeks for building a test environment, let alone infusing it with test data, you know, that they could, you know, perform their tests. So containers are a way of allowing the DevOps teams have a level of control of the operational environment and dependencies. As a result, containers have been identified by many organizations that we talk to as a catalyst for enabling innovation, modernization, you know, especially through building of applications specifically for cloud operations or enabling the auto-scaling of applications across multiple environments, such as a multi-cloud environment or a broader hybrid IT environment. What is really interesting in this is that the desire, you know, as is the third option, um, of strengthening CI, uh, CI and CD processes, which actually aligns with the increased investments for DevOps that we are seeing within many organizations. So if we look at the operational aspects for organizations, we see some key areas of focus. We're seeing that the automation is key within organizations, you know, especially automating as much as possible, which is very much the way, you know, what we're seeing the move to codify things such as infrastructure as code. And the greater levels of programmability is so important. However, automation is multifaceted and found to require 
more complex considerations in reality. Organizations that are cautious about the impact of deploying into production often still expect the final step of deploying changes into, you know, the sort of um, production environment to be done manually, especially in the form of, you know, just in case they need a final check policy. Automated testing has been found to be really crucial and needs to be integrated. Some organizations that have implemented DevOps initially focused on the deployment process itself. And in particular, you know, the act of making code changes before later adding automated testing. So it wasn't a first um, process. But for those that had no test at all, um, they needed to decide on what form this would take. You know, one organization that we spoke to um, decided, and this was an organization in the, um, you know, sort of humanitarian, you know, fintech environment, decided against using unit tests and went straight away with functional testing, which allowed them to only run tests against their development environment and not production. In this regard, their focus was on external facing solutions, which they provided. They had yet to build test application, you know, build tests for applications internally. But the most important thing is that, you know, rather than doing unit testing, they focused on, you know, sort of functional testing. Because going into production, any changes, any testings done in production environment would actually change the underlying database. So that was a consideration they had to think about. Appropriately targeted, so when we think about the other operational aspects, I think appropriately targeted education awareness initiatives are vital to unlocking the value of Agile and DevOps as they lay the foundation for enhanced delivery in a business-focused manner. Good training does help to reduce risks from the introduction of modern practices such as continuous automated testing, where Test cases are developed based on common corporate language that defines the why, the what, and the how of what businesses need to change and to achieve. Success is predicated on having a good balance of business and technically minded people with right creativity and imagination of working together. What is also important is when there is good, you know, recognition, you know, sort of within both business and IT, of the value of DevOps or the value that DevOps has delivered, you know, to enabling a particular business process or capability. This is really important because, you know, one of the things is recognizing a gap in communication can get in the way of progress and, you know, and harmony as not all stakeholders understand the value of the supporting release processes that help deliver much needed innovations. So this is one of the things that's really important, that communication. And as you can see, it's, it's not always a technical issue. So what challenges do many organizations, you know, you know sort of face with DevOps execution? Simply put, you know, whenever we talk to organizations and we ask them, you know, we ask them, you know, sort of, you know, what is it, you know, the list of, you know, we ask them what, what are the challenges they face or whenever we actually do a, you know, a survey or a questionnaire. Um, and one of the things that constantly comes up and it, it does time and time over again is that, you know, sometimes, you know, apart from the fact that lacking in skills and, you know, sort of, um, you know, sort of training and education and having the right, you know, sort of people in, involved is that it's often the starting point is, you know, where is, you know, how do I start? You know, how do I even get started? Where are the best places to think about using DevOps? How do I bring, you know, how do I implement those processes straight away? You know, um, and and what, what should I be kind of thinking of doing? Um, you know, and so, one of the things that we're, you know, we see is that adoption continues to be a work in progress for many organizations. And actually, it's one of the reasons why a lot of organizations look to external, you know, sort of um, external support or external services, because actually that can often kickstart 
their kind of um you know their sort of um journey um and devops um, journey and it also it brings a lot of um shared sort of um, um ideas that a service you know somebody or a service provider or a consultant can actually you know sort of bring into into play and sort of help people think about that so that's often the you know that's often for a lot of people a starting point and that's what we've seen for a lot of organizations very similar to you know when we started with agile um a, you know, a number of years ago when the agile sort of um revolution happened within organizations um modern and effective software release environments you know i think and i, I kind of sort of tried to say earlier is that it's it's more than just a technical you know, sort of um, application or or something that's for the technical team. You know, what is actually really important is that they're good for the whole workforce. And we're actually starting to see DevOps being used within organizations beyond the IT organization, bringing in, you know, and surprisingly, <laughs> strangely enough, in the business section, just in the business section, a bit like Agile was, you know, seen, you know, not just as a software um, solution, but also seen, you know, by kind of people who were producing hardware capabilities. So it's good for the workforce um, as well as um, the business, since I think, you know, as we've talked about earlier, it raises the capability of the engineering teams so that they, the business can see that and can see what the value it's bringing and um, to adapt better to changing market demands. And this makes it more than just a technical application, as I've said. So, Come towards the end. So getting ship shape for many organizations, what does that mean? Well, in short, frictionless DevOps within many organizations is heavily predicated on team responsibilities. Those who have committed DevOps strategies and processes state a market shift, a market shift from the days when the op teams were secluded and traditionally, you know, sort of required formal engagement. Now DevOps teams, and you know, they normally are teams, are more open and take on more responsibilities. Mature DevOps teams take on a lot of responsibilities for ops and what we you know, most people now know as you know, site reliability engineers, you know, a lot of their tasks, and they perform them very well. Responsibility means always looking at software from both sides of the divide, i.e. from development and operations. You know, the DevOps teams that we talk to um, are a combination of developers and those from systems infrastructure teams that might um, have, you know, either played a, a part in the agile development, you know, or agile de you know, deployment scrum teams. And, you know, this sees, you know, the presence of a mix of, you know, sort of people, which is actually really, really important. And it's seen development roles involved in the upstream build processes and system engineers more involved with infrastructure development and deployment who might have looked after the release process. And they both expanded their knowledge. So a successful DevOps team is now a mix of both these types of roles. But as with the drive to build across functional agile teams, DevOps teams within organizations are subscribing to the shift left approach, which involves addressing security early on as part of the build and release process. Hence the phenomenon of DevSecOps, that's what we've seen a lot. So taken hold within, and this has taken hold within many organizations. And it's, you know, it's a notion of DevOps needing a balance across functional teams with security roles be involved from the start who provide the guardrails and make it easier to work on all of the solutions. So that brings me in the last few seconds to sort of talk about the frameworks and foundations. So it really is about having, you know, vital partnership in automation and orchestration, a platform for integration and interoperability and comprehensive agility and managing the release of software applications as well as a good application programming interface. And the companies that have adopted and now practice DevOps see this as more than just a release by release focus. Thank you.